to the great detectives of old time radio. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham. If you have a comment, email it to me. Box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram. Instagram.com slash greatdetectives. If you're not subscribed to the podcast, you can subscribe wherever you download your podcast from. Whether that's Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Deezer, Podchaser, or Amazon Music at Amazon.com slash OTR Detectives. Also, I do encourage you to check out our other podcast, and today I want to highlight our old-time radio Superman show. If you're a fan of classic stories of the Man of Steel, this is a must-listen. Over a 10-year period, I went through every Superman radio serial and half-hour Superman episode. And you can follow that journey over at otrsuperman.com where we have more than 1,000 episodes posted. Now let's get into this week's episode of I Hate Crime. This is episode 6 and the original air date is 1949 or 1950. I was able to verify for sure that there were five weeks of episodes in 19. 1949, but I was unable to find out for sure when it actually started airing, so uh, we're going to be a bit more uncertain as to what year this actually played in. So let's go ahead now and take a listen. I was sitting in my office thumbing through my address book. Hadn't been through the book since making my trip to the States, and there were some names to cross out. The ones who'd got married in my absence. Leela Mason. What a shame. Sally Marshall. Ah, now there was a day. Larry Kent, Private Investigations. Oh, Mr. Kent, my name is June Harper. I'm calling on behalf of my aunt, Mrs. Anna Harper. Yeah, Miss Harper. Well, my aunt would like to see you on a business matter. A private investigation? Yes. Well, tell her to come along to my office. She can't do that. She's very ill and she's in bed. Oh. Well, in that case, what's the address? Number 26, Crescent Drive, Vaucluse. Right. I'll be there as soon as my car can take me. Thank you, Mr. Kent. I was at the house in 20 minutes. It was a big two-storied affair with a triple garage built in. It spelled Doe. But then, of course, the name Harper spelled Doe, too. Mrs. Anna Harper, a widow, was well known in Sydney society. Her husband had left her a couple of department stores and, uh, of course, a nice bank account. I'm Larry Kent. I'm June Harper. Please come in, Mr. Kent. Well, thank you. I followed her across half an acre of Persian rug, then up a flight of marble stairs, down a hall. Yes? It's June, Auntie. I have Mr. Kent with me. Come in. You can leave us alone, June. Yes, Auntie. I'm very glad to meet you, Mrs. Harper. Sit down. Thank you. Hmm. You look tough enough. Tough enough? For what? For the job I have in mind. But then, if you're lucky, you may not have to be tough. Exactly what is it you want done, Mrs. Harper? Have you ever heard of the Marker Diamond? Oh, everybody's heard of that. Hey, wait a minute. You're the owner of that diamond. I was, till yesterday. It was lifted? Yes. Taken from the safe downstairs, together with some cash. Hmm. How many people know the combination of the safe? I know what you're thinking, but I won't have it, Mr. Kent. I don't believe in loyalty you can cut in half the minute something happens. I believe in blind loyalty until proved otherwise. Then as far as you're concerned, it's an outside job? Yes. My niece, June, my nephew, Robert, and the servants must not be investigated. I see. Well, you're the boss. But let's get one thing straight, Mrs. Harper. If there are strings tied, I can't give any kind of guarantee. Fair enough. Now, 
this diamond. There's a photo of it on the table. Mm -hmm. Also, some information on it. The platinum setting, number of carats, and so on. Uh-huh. I want you to get it for me. I don't care how. I'll go as high as 15,000 pounds. How much is it worth? 50,000. It's insured with Mayflower for that 50. Uh-huh. You understand, of course, that I may have to deal with the thief himself. Or the fence he sold it to. I am not concerned about that. I want the diamond. With the photo and the information is a check for 150 pounds. All right? Fine. Good. I'll expect a report as soon as you know something. Good day, Mr. Kent. Goodbye, Mrs. Harper. Mr. Kent. Yeah? I know, of course, why you saw my aunt. If there's anything I can do to help... If there is, I'll get in touch with you. Please do. I left the place. Next move, a dirty little tenement at Paddington. Well, are you, Kent? Hello, Fingers. Oh, come on in. Come right in. Oh, it's real beautiful to see you. Uh, uh, sit down. Uh, no, no, not on that chair. One of the legs is a bit weak. Uh, well, uh, what can I do for you? Here's a picture of a diamond, Fingers. The marker diamond. Hmm. Oh, crap's a nice bit of rock, that. Lifted, I suppose, eh? Yeah. I want you to go to every fence in the city. I want you to put your ear on the ground and keep it there. Yeah? Well, go on. Uh, what's all the drill? Well, it's a deal, Fingers. No questions asked. Yeah. And uh, the uh, the folds and stuff? Ten thousand. Yeah. Well, that's very nice, isn't it, eh? Uh, how much uh, like do you get? Well, uh, like that's my business. Yeah. In other words, uh, I can go higher, right? Eh? You start the deal and I'll finish it. Okay, good, okay. Uh, uh, how much like uh, for me trouble? Uh, I mean, you know, it's uh, a specialised sort of business and... Uh... The same as usual, five a day. Oh, cripes, but with income tax like... You never it. paid income tax in your life. Oh, the way you treat me, can't honest. Okay, you get 50. 50? Well, now, now, look here, let's say I'm 50. about... 50, uh... get moving. Check back twice a day. Three days passed. Each check was the same. Uh, there's, uh, there's like nothing doing yet, Kent, but I'm, uh, I'm staying right on it. Uh, you know me. Then, on the morning of the fourth day... Good morning. She did a nice, slow, dignified dance to my desk. She had a cold but pretty face that led to very interesting avenues of exploration. Her business suit was severely cut, but the tailor didn't have a chance for those curves. Looking at her was like following a road map. Pacific Highway near the Hawkesbury, for instance. Not one straight line. My name is Marcia Spence. I represent the Mayflower Insurance Company. Well, I'm happy to know you. Won't you, uh, sit down? I won't be here that long. Oh. What's on your mind? The marker diamond? Precisely. Oh, precisely. Aren't we all business? What's up? Investigators from the company have heard your name mentioned. Also, there's an unsavory character named... Fingers. Oh, so the Mayflower uh, investigators are working underground, too. As you know, Mr. Kent. Yeah, even dignified companies like Mayflower sometimes have to stoop over a little. But uh, what's that got to do with uh, you and me? It has nothing to do with us personally. Then, uh... I'm here to, well, to make you an offer. Yeah? One thousand pounds if you're instrumental in returning the marker diamond to Mrs. Harper... Or if you can prove Mrs. Harper has no legal claim. Mayflower suspects dirty work. I offer no explanation. I merely mention one thousand pounds. Are you interested? Well, I don't know. Uh, maybe we could discuss it over a few drinks, huh? I would much rather remain impersonal. Don't you ever have any fun? Yes. I'm often amused by the antics of wolves. Oh. Good morning, Mr. Kent. Hmm. 
That was telling me off. She did her dignified dance to the door, turned around for a final look, got... And... <laughs> I like icebergs. It's so rewarding uh, when they melt. Another day, another visitor. <clears throat> a tall guy, well-dressed, good-looking in an aristocratic sort of way. I'm Robert Harper. Mrs. Harper's nephew. That's correct, Mr. Kent. How are you and June related? We're cousins. Mm -hmm. What can I do for you? Uh, Archie told me about the uh, deal that she made with you. Yeah. Well, to come straight to the point, I realize that 15,000 pounds may not be enough for you to make a suitable uh, arrangement. So I place an additional 7,000 pounds at your disposal. Well, you're giving me 22,000 to play with. That's right. Why? Well, the thief or the uh, receiver of the diamond may not be willing to let it go for less than 20000 or so. What do you get out of it? My aunt's happiness. Oh, yeah? You don't believe me, do you? No. Well, the truth is, Mr. Kent, I'm very fond of my aunt. She's been good to me. And that diamond means a lot to her. It's been passed down through the family and all that. She may not have long to live, Mr. Kent. I'd like to see her get the diamond back before she dies. You want me to mention the 7000 to her? No. Not even if I buy the diamond from a fence? Not even then. In fact, I offer the 7000 on the condition that you don't tell my aunt. And I'm not being as generous as I may seem. The 7000 was hers in the first place, anyhow. Okay. Now, look, uh, sorry if I uh, had to ask some leading questions. Oh, that's all right. You can contact me at Hardy's house or at the sportsman's club if and when you need the 7000 He went. Still another day passed. On this day, there was no check from Fingers. I went to his tenement. Wasn't there. His landlady had seen him leave early that morning. I got to my apartment at about nine that night. Don't try anything silly. What? I've been sitting here in the dark for quite some time. Well, with a gun for company. My locked door didn't give you much trouble, did it? No. I opened it with a special key, then I locked it from the inside. Clever. Is this a stick-up? Oh, no, nothing like that. As long as we're uh, being so chummy, uh, what's your name? I'll tell you what. You can call me Paula. Paula didn't look very much like a stick-up artist. She had big green eyes, an innocent face, and a terrific profile right down to the carpet. Put a dame like Paula on a desert island and then watch all the shipwrecks. Wondering why I'm here? Yeah, uh, and at the same time wishing it was a uh, sociable visit. But I didn't come here to be nasty. Well, then why the uh, gun? At this stage of the game, it's a necessary prop. You see, I'm here to make an appointment for you. With who? A man who had the marker diamond. <laughs> you wouldn't kid me, would you? A smart private detective like you. Okay, Paula. When, where, and how? Tonight at 12, behind the library in the domain. A man will be there with a the diamond. All he wants from you is 20,000 pounds. That's a lot of dough. Get it, and you get the diamond. That's all. Mary. Good night. She backed her way out. I didn't try to stop her, but I went down the fire escape and along the alley. I saw her get into a cab. I took the license number just in case. After that, I had a lot of work to do. I saw Mrs. Harper, got the 15000 went to the sportsman's club and got 7000 from Robert Harper. Then, just before 12, I headed for the domain. Went behind the library, waited, saw no one... And then, a stab of flame from a silenced gun and a burning pain in my side. I went down with a slight burn my side. Lying on my stomach, I hauled out the 38, looked into the darkness. There were a few trees that threw giant shadows. Something moved in the shadows. I rolled... A slug from the silence gun kicked gravel into my face. I pressed the trigger and kept pressing. 
One of the slugs had hit. I got to my feet and ran towards the guy. When I got close, I saw that he was on his knees. He lifted his gun, but... And that was that. Except for the cops who came running from all directions. An hour later, I was at police headquarters with Inspector Daniels. The police doctor had already strapped my side. The slug had bounced off a rib. It was painful, but not dangerous. Daniels was in his usual mood. So this is why I was hauled out of bed. Sorry. What's it all about? I got a phone call to see a guy about a case. I was supposed to meet him near the library. At midnight? The customer is always right, Inspector. Exactly who were you supposed to see? He didn't give his name. Who was the guy, anyhow? A thug who's wanted for murder in Victoria. Now that I've answered your question, how about telling me the truth? I've already told you the truth, Inspector. Do you expect me to believe that cock and bull story? Look, you're up to your ears in something. I know for a fact that you're trying to buy the Mark of Diamond. My figs, fizz gigs have heard of it. Okay, so I'm trying to buy it. It's not the first time it's been done. This little party tonight tie into it? If it does, I don't see where. If you're lying, Kent... Lying? Me? Why, Inspector, one of these days, Kent, get out of my sight. I did. I went home. I wanted to be nice and fresh in the morning so I could be at my best when I found a certain redhead. I hit the hay, got up at eight. The morning paper had been pushed beneath the door. On page three, I discovered why Fingers hadn't got in touch with me. He was at Mercy Hospital. Fingers lay back on the bed, looking like a mummy. Oh, oh, Kent. Oh, Kent. What happened? Well, I, I like, I, I, I did what you told me. I, 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 I kept me here to the ground. Yeah. I, I saw every fence in town. Honest, I did. Everybody who could have been in on the deal. Then, uh, then yesterday Arvo, like I'm, I'm walking along Rose Lane, you know where uh, Rose Lane up in town. Yeah, and, I know. Uh, yeah, Go well, on. Then, 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 bang! Something hits me and, and keeps on hitting me, and the next thing I, I know, I'm here. Did you find out anything at all? Nothing, honest, Kent. Not a, not a, not a thing. Oh, leave me in peace. Oh, if I don't die, it won't be because I don't want to. Oh, me head, me arms, me legs. Oh. I left Fingers, told the matron to send the bill to me, and then I went to the Triangle Cab Company. The night before, the redhead had used one of the Triangle Cabs. I saw the dispatcher, showed him my license, gave him the number of the cab. He didn't want to play ball till he saw the color of a five-pound note. And then? Oh, I see, Sammy. Fat like down the garage. I went to the garage. A fat guy was sitting on the garage floor, his back against the wall. He was rolling a cigarette. Your name, Sammy? Who wants to know? The name's Larry Kent. A private eye? Yeah. You can do something for me, Sammy. Look, anybody can say they're Larry Kent, you know. I could say I'm General MacArthur. Yeah, you could if you wanted to. Here. My wallet. Have a look at the license. Uh Uh-huh. Seems okay. Nice wallet. Yeah, made out of Texas cowhide. Real thick, ain't it? Mm-hmm. But uh, if I take a fiver out like this, it uh, gets a little thinner. Yeah. Not much thinner, though. You picked up a redhead last night, Sammy. Did I? I saw you. It was on Morgan Street. Was it? Can't prove it by me. Uh, Sammy, you, uh, you keep a log on all passengers, don't you? Yeah. Well, then you can tell me where you took the redhead, can't you? Well, sometimes a bloke gets uh, forgetful, sort of misplaces his logbook. You got a match? Eh? Oh, yeah. Here. Uh, It's a nice lighter you got. Hmm. Expensive. Yeah, uh, Sammy, about this redhead. Yeah. Where did you take her? You know, it's a funny thing. My memory's not so good lately. Oh, I get it. Well, sometimes the uh, color blue is good for the memory. Yeah, sometimes. 
When there's enough of it. Now look, two fibers is as high as I'll go. Hmm. Looks much better now. Well, here you are. Uh, now, that memory of yours, let's get it moving, shall we? All right, that's a uh, funny thing, but suddenly it's all as plain as it can be. This redhead, pretty piece in a green dress. Yeah? Took her to a hotel, the Fairmont on Bellows Street, you know? Yeah, thanks. Uh-huh. I went outside, got into my car, drove to Bellows Street. The Fairmont wasn't a good hotel, it wasn't a bad one, just a place to hang your hat. I had a talk with a clerk, made up a story... Found out the redhead's name really was Paula, and got a room number. Uh, Hi. Uh, you can't uh, close the door on me, kid. I used to sell vacuum cleaners. There we are. Uh, I'll just lock this. Put the key in my pocket. What are you going to do? I'll tell you what I should do, Paula. I should slap the heck out of you. You're not big enough. <laughs> That's the way I like them. Good and tough. Makes it easier when you don't want to hit a woman. Stay away from me. What's on the table behind you that you don't want me to see, Paula? Stay away. Move. Uh, 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 well, a photograph. Photograph of Robert Harper. Look what he's written. My darling Paula, all my love, Bob. How nice. It- Get away from that drawer. Okay. Oh, my hand. Now, take it out nice and slow, honey, and make sure there's no gun in it. That's right. Must be broken. I didn't push quite hard enough for that. Ah, so it's you and Robert Harper, huh? Does his aunt know? Then it won't matter who knows. Ah, love, it's wonderful. It's too bad. I've got to break it up. You've got nothing to call on us. There's the guy who tried to kill me. Just a paid killer. You can't prove Robert Harden. Why didn't you let me have it when you had the chance? I should have. Killing's not in my line. No, nor in your boyfriend's either. You don't get blood on your hands. You let others do it for you like fingers. That's right. He was bashed by the same fellow who tried to do you in. But you can't prove it. Maybe not to the cops, but I can break up your little game. How? By finding that diamond. Well, you won't find it here. I didn't. There was only one other place it could be. So I made a phone call, arranged for a guy to help keep Paula occupied for a few hours. Then I went to the Wadsworth building. A skeleton key let me into Robert Harper's apartment. After a search, I found a small wall safe. Another phone call to a safe cracker friend. And he opened the safe. And I had it. The Marker Diamond. Mr. Kent. Hello, June. What happened last night? We read in the newspaper. I'll explain in a minute. First, do you have any idea where your cousin Robert is? Why, yes. He's upstairs with Auntie. Fine. That saves me a lot of trouble. Look. A diamond? Yeah. Let's go up. Uh, Mr. Ken, why, this is a surprise. You haven't seen anything yet. Hello, Mrs. Harper. I hope you have some good news for me, Mr. Ken. Oh, I have, I have. Plus your 15,000 and your seven, Robert. But last night, you, you said you'd be able to get the diamond. Yes, we've been trying to get in touch with you. And why did you give Robert that money? It seems to me there's a lot of explaining to do, Mr. Kent. That's right, from me and Robert. What do you mean by that? Sit down and relax. You can't push me around like that. You get up again and you'll make me prove how wrong you are, Robert. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Kent? I'll give it to you fast. Robert here evidently needs money. That's a lie. It's true, Auntie. He's been gambling. I didn't want to mention this, but the other day I heard him speak to a gambler over the phone. It seems that Robert owes him a great deal of money. Preposterous. Give me your version of what happened, Mr. Kent. Sure. Robert lifted the diamond, and then to throw suspicion away from himself, he came to me with an offer to add 7,000 to the money you gave me, Mrs. Harper. I just wanted to make sure that you got the diamond back, Auntie. We'll see. Keep talking, Mr. Kent. The diamond itself wasn't enough for Robert. He wanted your 15,000, too, so through a girlfriend, he made a phony date for me to buy the diamond. But his killer didn't get me. Lies. All lies. 
He called this a lie? The diamond? Where did you get it? In his wall safe. I'll take that and the money. Well, it seems I made a mistake. I didn't figure you'd be carrying a gun. The diamond, Auntie, and the money. No, Robert. You'll have to shoot me to get it, and I don't think you've got the nerve. Give it to me, or by heaven, I will shoot you. You know I feel exactly the same. I'll take the gun, Robert. Don't come any closer. I grabbed his wrist, twisted. And now... Nicely done, Mr. Hett. June, get the police on the phone. A bonus from Mrs. Harper, a warm smile that had a lot of promise in it from June, a lot of words with the cops, and then hours later, a trip to the office of Marcia Spence in the Mayflower Insurance Company. You needn't have come in person, Mr. Kent. We've received word from Mrs. Harper that the diamond's been returned. Oh, there's a little question of, uh, payment. A check is being made out to you. Well, I was thinking about a different kind of payment. Uh, something in the nature of a bonus. Uh, please stay on the other side of my desk. You know, I've got a theory about you, Marcia. Mr. Kent. I think there's only uh, a very thin coating of ice. Mr. Kent, don't... That's right. Stand up. Make it easier. You see, I'm going to try to break the ice. Get your hands off! Uh, there. Well, what's your answer to that? Well, I guess the ice is a little thicker than I thought. So long. Uh, you give up easily, don't you? Did I hear you correctly? Uh huh. Come here. <laughs> That wasn't rain you saw on the road the other day. An iceberg melted on George Street. Good night. Welcome back. Well, the nephew is just kind of a bit dumb here, I think. He could have walked away with 20000 free and clear. Instead, he decided to engage a killer to kill Larry Kent. And that doesn't make sense in a world where Kent is this fantastically well-known uh, investigator. But greed and stupidity are quite a combination, and it just doesn't end well for him. All right, well, listen our comments and feedback now, and we're going to do something I don't think we've done before, or if we have, it's been quite a while. I was checking uh, out the listener survey over at survey.greatdetectives.net and noticed comments, and I don't recall noticing that People could leave comments. Uh, obviously, there's quite a few stacked up. I'm not going to read them all, but just some that have come through in recent months. Uh, we have uh, uh, some of these. We start with uh, I Don't Miss Adam Shows from Jonathan. And another a listener writes, I look forward to this podcast every day. It makes my commute much more enjoyable. One thing I'd like to hear is a three- and four-part radio series all in a row, say Monday through Wednesday, every so often. It would be a nice change-up. Otherwise, keep up the great work. Well, thanks so much, and I think that is a really good idea. It's a bit of a challenge with what survived from the golden age of radio. There were certainly plenty of serialized uh, mystery stories. But the problem is that very few of them have survived as intact. So we've got mostly standalone stories, and of course we do have the Johnny Dollar serials, which will be playing on Tuesdays and Fridays. I have taken a couple of the serialized stories we've done uh, during a couple of uh, summer breaks and played those episodes back to back. We did Nick Carter, a serial, which we originally played in four over four weeks. We played it uh, 
back-to-back Monday through uh, Thursday. And then we did the nine-part Bob Bailey serial, The Silent Queen Matter, over the course of an entire week. And I don't think we will probably be replaying a serial during uh, the 2023 summer break. It's something I'll definitely will keep in mind for 2024. And then we have a comment from uh, Stephen uh, in the UK who writes, I enjoy the episodes, but always look forward to Adam's commentary at the end. It's like listening with to a friend who knows slightly more than I do. Well, thanks so much. And yeah, I, I appreciate that. And I like that. I'm not some sort of uber expert on old time radio and history of the 1940s and 50s. But I've studied it a bit and know a bit. But I always love when I learn something from people who are listening as well. Pamela writes, love the show and the tidbits of information that Adam gives. Not all shows are routinely listened to, but I love quite a few of them. Another listener writes, great show, Sherlock Holmes rocks. Lou writes, has blitzed all other crime podcasts, comprehensive cross-section of the golden age of uh, radio, first pick for Desert Island Survival Kit. Thanks for your passion and dedication. Well, thank you so much, Lou. I appreciate your comments, and I appreciate everyone who uh, took the survey, whether they left a comment or not, over at uh, survey.greatdetectives.net. really gives us a great picture of who's listening to the podcast. All right, well, now it's time to thank our Patreon supporter of the day. Thank you to MCF Patreon supporter since March of 2021, currently supporting us at the master detective level of $15 or more per month. Thanks so much for your support. And that will do it for today. A reminder that you can subscribe to the podcast with your preferred podcast player, whether it's Overcast, Apple Podcast, Amazon Music at Amazon.com slash OTR Detectives. If you are enjoying this podcast on YouTube, be sure and like the video, subscribe to the channel, and mark the notification bell. We'll be back next Tuesday with another episode of I Hate Crime, but join us tomorrow for Dangerous Assignment, where... What happened? We don't know. Boat apparently sank. Hmm. Any survivors? One. That can named Griggs. He disappeared before I could get down here. It's either one of two things, Steve. Griggs got away with the data they compiled, or else it's at the bottom of the Caribbean. You know, if that falls into the wrong hands, none of our ports and harbors would be safe. You got any line on Griggs? Not until three days ago. And Griggs popped up here in Trinidad looking real prosperous, throwing dough around. Well, maybe he sold the plan. I don't think so, Steve. He started out fitting a treasure hunting expedition. His outfit is shoving off tomorrow on a little boat called the Sea Witch. I've been trying to get a job on it. Hey, you could be walking into a lot of trouble. Steve, hmm. see that babe over there in the corner? Corner table alone. Yeah, what about her? That's Griggs' girlfriend. I can't get any information from her. I, uh, I think she likes the more of your size. <laughs> okay, I'll give it a try. See you later. I hope you'll be with us then. In the meantime, do send your comments to box13 at greatdetectives.net. Follow us on Twitter at Radio Detectives and check us out on Instagram, instagram.com slash greatdetectives. From Boise, Idaho, this is your host, Adam Graham, signing off.